Okay, so slightly uh, less formal video than normal this week. Uh, end of a long day, so I'm just in my t-shirt from earlier. Um, but let's have a look at my performance this week. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty modest, uh, plus 98. Uh, not not especially notable. Uh, what I would say is that toward the end of the week, uh, I got caught up in the same fun that everyone else did. Uh, my Thursday especially was uh, notable, and my UK stocks got hammered, where I'm overweight in uh, mining, uh, discretionary, and financials, which of course were like the three sectors that got battered. So I underperformed um, FTSE, but actually overperformed the S&P. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, it was a nice week for dividends, and um, you know I continue to add uh, £160 per weekday across two portfolios. Uh, the reason we have two portfolios is because we have something called ISAs in the UK, uh, and these are extremely tax efficient uh, investments, uh, So, but you can only have uh, 20000 a year into each one of them, so one for me and one for my wife. Uh, hence, that works out at uh, £80 a day into each one, so 160 uh, I also have about three grand in cash uh, put aside uh, so that I can add to the dip, and I decided to take out uh, 424 it was. Uh, I say in cash, it's actually held in khaki uh, shares, um, which I just like the company and they're kind of a good store of uh, value and hopefully moving in the right direction, which, which they are. Uh, so I sold a few of those and uh, used that to buy uh, on Thursday's dip, so that was nice. So uh, a pretty okay week and uh, we're going to go on and see uh, what I, what stocks I bought and sold uh, during that week. Uh, so here, uh, a clear focus on uh, HBAN. Uh, I really like this bank. I think it's really undervalued. Uh, it's kind of my financial of choice currently. Um, and it, w it was dipping under 14. Um, for me, this is uh, a 1720 stock, uh, and I was uh, throwing money at it at 1360. Uh, not only did I sell out of one of my positions, um, but I also added more capital, as I said. So this has gone from being a medium holding to now my second largest uh, company in my portfolio. And, and I'm tempted to add more, um, but probably need it to go uh, you know, to the low 13s now, just because I have a fairly large position. So um, the uh, next notable one, though, is Fever Tree. Uh, this is a soft drinks company I really like and trying to add shares under 25 quid uh, you can see here I'm slightly above that I added five at 25.04 and five at 25.05 uh, so uh, but you know super happy with uh, to be adding to this position uh, it is a growth stock uh, it does pay a dividend but it's quite irregular and um, you know it should be a recovery stock as well so that's great uh, outside of that um, I continue to focus on financials minus uh, mining uh, and averaging down I do appreciate at the moment I feel like I'm going slightly counter to, to, to the market um, but I just think there are some deals to be had uh, and I'm pretty optimistic in those uh, in the companies I have and those sectors in general uh, so you can see I've got Anto for Gasta, I've got Everaz as well uh, financials not only do I have HBAN but I've got legal and general Phoenix um, you know just a couple of others as well so from that perspective uh, and then I'm averaging into a couple of positions as well like TK and uh, who else do we have uh, Edison genius uh, etc so um, relatively happy with my buys this week I think uh, they're either kind of moving uh, into my strategy uh, or I'm picking up what I think is uh, is good deal so that's all great um, I did I did sell out of um, a lot of my shares of uh, Lockheed as you'll see in a second uh, but I have started to add back in mainly because I've decided to add them uh, to make them my dividend pick uh, this is an idea I flirted with a little bit and it's basically picking one company uh, that you know I think is going to be around for a long time and uh, putting all of my dividends into it for maybe a year or so um, and I decided that in my personal life so that's going to be Lockheed um, and so I used my dividend from Games Workshop uh, for that which was the only dividend I actually got uh, in my personal ISA this week. Uh, so let's have a look at the shares I bought next. Alright so on to shares I sold, a much smaller list here. Uh, so um, AMD first of all, I did have a much bigger holding, I aggressively acquired them at $73 which seemed like a really great deal to me. Uh, I believe that they're worth 95 uh, so when they were near the peak and you know Huntington and others were uh, what I thought were cheap, uh, I sold out most of my AMD position already and just kept the one. Uh, and this is just selling off that just to simplify my portfolio a little bit. Um, was happy with my uh, with my entry and exit point there. Made made some good money on that. Uh, Unity was fairly similar, although on a much smaller holding. Uh, I might think about Unity, but if I'm honest, it's not really an area that I know much about. Um, so I want to I want to uh, be in that sphere, uh, but I just don't feel super knowledgeable about it. And again, I just wanted to free up a small amount of money and consolidate, simplify my portfolio. 
Uh, Lockheed here, I did sell out. Uh, there was some profit I made. I think it was about 7%, so nothing uh, amazing, but solid all the same. Uh, this was partly about freeing up cash for uh, Huntington again, um, but I also decided I wanted a clean slate for uh, my dividend pick. So, you know, now I know whenever I look at my Lockheed Martin position, I've added no additional capital to it, right? It's going to be pure uh, dividend. So I just like the simplicity of that. Uh, and JP Morgan here, um, last but not least, uh, this is kind of a bit more historic compared to AMD and Unity. I've had JP Morgan almost from day one. Um, I sold out most of it a while ago, originally for Broadcom swing trading uh, and then for Vistra, uh, an energy company. Uh, and I just had one share left that I, I just again decided to get rid of. I uh, have enough financials elsewhere now, and obviously Huntington is my uh, US bank pick of choice. Uh, so I, I just decided to take the profit on that and uh, move on. Uh, okay, that's the summary. We're now going to walk through. Uh, my ISA and my wife's ISA in a bit more detail um, but if anyone's interested about these or thinks I made a mistake either buying or selling then I'll be happy to hear your uh, your thoughts but I'm pretty happy actually with what I did uh, this week and um, and yeah uh, okay so now on to the detailed walkthrough of the ISAs. Okay, so this is my ISA currently at 37,000 and we're going to whiz through this as fast as possible. So Blue Prism, this is a, a company that's AI automation, etc. I'm adding one share a day and just averaging into it basically. Uh, not profitable, but I'm hopeful for the future. Uh, this is a Californian based utility. Uh, this is actually from a Discord conversation. Somebody sort of said, what do you think of Edison? Had a little look into it and you know, it's got some risks associated with it, sure. Uh, but for me, it's a good entry point. So again, I'm just adding sort of a couple of shares a week and going to average into this nice and slow. Uh, Enterprise, I really like my average uh, buy-in here is $23, just above, and I'm not adding any more, I'm just uh, enjoying the dividends, and um, you know, if it goes under $23, I'll think about it, uh, I'm fine having a pipeline that I'm not concerned about, uh, oil and gas, etc. Uh, Everaz, this is a oil-focused uh, Russian uh, mining company. Uh, for me, I've been averaging up um, and I've been buying under 600 pence. Uh, I'm still optimistic about mining and growth and the economic recovery in general. Uh, this also has a big fat dividend. Uh, it's been a bit uh, all over the place recently, but I'm happy uh, with my buy price and happy to add more under 600. Uh, Fever Tree, I entered about four months ago. This is a, a soft drinks company that's used for mixers for alcohol. Uh, I really like it. I'm super optimistic for the future on it. And uh, and for me, I'm trying to buy underneath 2,500 or 25 quid. Uh, bought slightly above that, but again, I'm happy with my buy price here and want to add to this aggressively. Uh, Games Workshop, this is the uh, company behind uh, Warhammer. Um, I just, I mean, the numbers are incredible. I'm not currently buying at this price. Um, to me, it's like a 120 pound stock, maybe 125. Uh, so it being 115, it's just too too close to buy more, really. Uh, I did buy one share last month at uh, 1100, um, and that's probably the maximum I want to go to. But I like the company, I have no plans to sell it at all. And again, super happy with my buy price here under 100. Uh, Huntington is where all of my focus went last week. Not only did I free up cash from uh, Lockheed Martin sale, uh, but I was at actively adding more than my uh, drip <clears throat> into this portfolio. Uh, I like the company. I think it's really undervalued, and I've built quite a big stake in it now. So I probably won't be adding too much unless it goes, you know, to maybe below 13 or something silly. Um, I'm just going to enjoy it, uh, and yeah, I, th I think it's a good company. Uh, Legal in general is an insurance mainstay in the UK. Uh, originally, I was just going to have a small stake, but it went down, and I, so I just keep on adding basically. Uh, I think this share is worth 310, 320. Uh, so current prices, you know, I'm, I'm happy with my uh, with my future potential profit uh, on this, and I'm just going to keep adding to it. It has a nice dividend as well, so that'd be nice. Uh, Lockheed, I sold out of all my shares uh, this week. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put all of my future dividends into them. So uh, put in 12.50 from Games Workshop dividend uh, in this portfolio this week. And uh, you know, although it's uh, 43p profit, uh, that's just because of some previous uh, purchases, etc. So uh, that will normalize in the future. Mace Rich is a recovery share for me. I'm not adding anything to it until you know COVID and that situation uh, clarifies a little bit, but uh, I'm happy with it anyway. I'm just going to ride it hopefully nice and high uh, yeah, for a uh, mall operator that I'm confident in. Microsoft, I don't think, needs any introduction. I'm not currently adding to this just because it is a bit expensive, um, and I will buy on any dip. I, I really like the company, though. It's one of my largest holdings. Uh, speaking of my largest holdings, I think this is my third largest holding currently. Um, 
and I, I think this was potentially my most undervalued uh, share. Uh, I didn't add any this week, but that's the first week in quite a while that I haven't. Uh, I think it's being incorrectly seen as a COVID recovery stock, but a lot of its revenue is secured uh, by the state, and it's already at like 75% of its pre-COVID revenues, and earnings above 100% of its pre-COVID earnings, uh, just be where it's become more efficient and better as a business, uh, and I'm pretty confident uh, in this business, and I probably will look to keep adding to it. Uh, it's a pro possibility it may well end up my largest holding, uh, just because I really believe it's uh, about 50% undervalued at the moment. Uh, another insurance company. <clears throat> uh, this was actually about a third owned by uh, a Swiss Re, uh, following some uh, mergers uh, from yesteryear, uh, and they sold half of their stock, uh, and the, the share price took a 5% dip. So for me, this was a, a good buying opportunity. I think it is mostly up to up to events. Uh, maybe it's 720 as my share price target here. Uh, so you know, when it when it took a bit of a dip, I decided to just buy some shares. And again, a nice dividend. Uh, super confident in this uh, insurer, which specialises in buying sort of close life uh, insurance products from uh, other companies. Uh, Polymetal is a gas and silver miner. Uh, I added five shares the week before. Uh, for me, anything under 1600 uh, is uh, tempting and under 1550 is definitely good. Uh, this is currently 3% of my portfolio and I'm using it like as a hedge. I'd like to get that close to 5%, um, but no rush on that at all. And again, a nice dividend in the meantime. One of my newer positions, uh, I didn't add any last week, I don't think, or maybe I added one. Um, but yeah, to me, I'm just going to average into this. This is a shipping transportation company, a uh, small stake at the moment, so I don't need to talk about it further. <clears throat> uh, Telecom Plus, this is a FTSE 250 telco. Nothing sexy in terms of technology, um, but I think the um, the numbers aren't necessarily being appreciated by the market, and so I'm building a stake. Uh, for me, this is maybe 20%, maybe 25% undervalued. I could have been a bit patient with my entry, actually, to this. I went a bit big uh, too early uh, rather than dripping in, but still, I, I have no uh, problem with the company and at the moment I'm just adding one share a day on most days. Uh, and last but not least is uh, TELUS. Uh, I think we all know TELUS. Uh, it does have a sexy uh, telehealth business, uh, but otherwise it's a very well-run uh, telco. And again, I'm just um, going to follow the share price relatively closely here and uh, average into it. So uh, that's my ISA. Uh, and now we're going to move on to my wife's. Okay, and uh, so on to my wife's ISA. Uh, this is Amazon. Uh, it's had a pretty good couple of weeks, honestly. Uh, I wanted to get to one full share before it went above 3,300. Uh, I only managed to get to three quarters of one, but I really like the company and uh, happy with my entry price here, uh, moving in the right direction. Uh, Anto here, this is a copper play. Um, I still believe in mining and recovery, and um, and in, so for me, this company's had a bit of a pullback over the last couple of months, and um, I'm happy with the entry price at 14 quid here. I'm going to be adding to this uh, actively over the next few weeks, I suspect. Uh, Apple, again, I'm pretty bullish about this company in the long run. Uh, you can see my average is relatively high, one to four, but I'm still sitting on a you know 19% profit at the moment. I'm very happy as a relatively new holding on this one as well. Uh, Aviva, this is a UK focused insurance company. It's actually been around for absolutely ages, you know, hundreds of years literally. It can trace its roots back. Um, it's a general insurer, one of the largest, if not the largest, I think, uh, FTSE 100. Um, this is an interesting one because it's kind of a bit of a turnaround. A new CEO uh, just over a year ago, and generally moving in the right direction, consolidating, simplifying the business, and uh, actually at the moment sitting on a lot of cash. Uh, there's some potential for a special bonus in the future. Uh, I'm buying here under 410, uh, and especially under 400, I managed to pick up some shares this week at uh, 399, which I'm super happy with. <clears throat> uh, BNS, uh, Bank of Nova Scotia, um, again, I think I have actually an okay buy price here. Um, I'm not adding super aggressively to this. Uh, it's one of my smaller financial holdings alongside another one we'll get to in a second. Um, but I'm also fine to hold it. I think it's a perfectly nice company. And actually, I'm kind of hoping it's going to fall a bit further, maybe below 60, uh, when I'll definitely add some more. Uh, Bristol Myers, uh, again, I think this is still undervalued. It's one of those I'm constantly thinking of adding like one or two shares to. Um, it, I think it's a fine company, not bothered about uh, any patent cliffs or anything like that. Uh, and I'm actually quite optimistic about... Uh, current financial performance and improvements. Uh, Broadcom here, I just have 0.1 share at the moment. Uh, this is something I swing trade where I start buying under 455 and start selling above 475. Uh, I've actually made about 400 quid profit uh, doing that, uh, but currently I haven't found a good entry point, but uh, just keep 0.1 shares here just so I can keep an eye on uh, what's happening with it. 
So Cyrus won. Uh, this is something I accidentally swung trade in June after a random surge above 80, uh, which I think is its fair value price. Um, so I'm, I'm, I basically traded this super well. Uh, I haven't added any last week, but I did add some uh, toward the end of June back in again after it came back to uh, down to earth. Uh, and again, really happy with this one. I think I made £300 swing trading and I'm already back up £100. So I feel like I know this company really well. It's a kind of an underappreciated uh, data center REIT. Uh, Danahar here, I sort of again wish I'd added more to this and been a bit braver. Uh, I really like the company, but it trades on a super hefty multiple. Uh, but love what they're doing. I think it's a pretty cool company from the uh, from kind of tech and healthcare perspective. Uh, and um, and again, I'm, I'm happy with it. It does technically pay a dividend, a uh, tiny, tiny dividend. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm more in this for the growth. And, you know, it's kind of one of those companies you want to be successful. Uh, this is the other small financial holding I have here, Fidelity National. Uh, I actually have traded this as well, freed up some money for uh, Vistra, which is at the end of this uh, portfolio. Uh, so I'm actually profitable overall, but the shares I've got currently, which I am buying back into, uh, are minus uh, 952. Uh, the shares I sold out of, I think, were 46. So um, I, I sort of timed that quite well as well. Well, actually, just by chance. <clears throat> uh, Genius here is a company I've become increasingly bullish about. Originally, it was a SPAC under DMYD, uh, but they, you know, they started to ink major deals. Uh, to me, it kind of bridges a couple of things I'm interested in, you know, like sports data and gambling. Uh, that's going to be of interest to me. And I'm at, I've been adding... Um, following a rights issue that they did in June. A fairly deep rights issue at $19. Um... But for me, I, I mean, it had gone to like $25 the month before, and I think this share price should be about $22, 23 uh, So I've been adding underneath 18 uh, sorry, underneath 19 uh, over here. So and I just add one share a day if it's under 19 so uh, you can see at the moment slightly above. But yeah, I, I like it anyway. Uh, this is my largest holding Hollywood Bowl. This is a bowling centre in the UK. Uh, I really like it. It's been proper all over the place recently, but the long-term numbers I'm super confident with. It's still a growth stock, although it pays out dividend uh, pre-COVID. Uh, and, you know, when, when its centres are open, etc., it throws off money. Sitting on a solid profit, uh, I actually originally started buying into this at like 170, <clears throat> uh, but I just like the company so much I've, ad I've averaged up quite aggressively and happy to have done so. Huntsman here is a really nifty little uh, chemical company. Um, it recently increased its dividend and had a bit of a run up to like $32. I was a bit disappointed I couldn't buy more, but then quite randomly, as far as I can tell, uh, it then went back down to, you know, $25, uh, low 25s as well. So I, again, I've been adding to my shares uh, at that sort of level. Um, the only bad news I can find really is that it's um, in, uh, engaging in building a very fancy uh, new factory uh, for sort of clean uh, clean energy production. Uh, it's not going to be live for another three years. So, you know, that is going to depress earnings. But I, I like a company that's investing in the future in that kind of area. So I'm super happy to build stake. And again, I've been adding here under $26, uh, not currently adding any more, um, but happy with my position at one of my largest holdings. I think it's my third largest holding. Uh, Merck here, super happy with my entry at $73. I got a special dividend from the Organon uh, spin-off as well. Uh, I'm not buying at 78 I will buy at 75 uh, I'm actually looking to try and add to my healthcare position at the moment, so any ideas there, I'm happy to listen. Uh, but in general, actually, I think there are some good, uh, some fair-valued uh, stocks in the healthcare uh, sector in general. Uh, Pets at Home here. This isn't Pets America, which I know there was another ticker for it, but Pets UK. Now, this is kind of one of those companies that's done great out of COVID, as a lot of pet-focused businesses have. I think this is quite expensive at the moment, so I haven't been adding to it. Uh, I was actually adding under 420, which even then I thought was reasonably expensive. Uh, and at 480, which it, it reached, I was really tempted to sell. Um, not because I don't dislike, you know, don't like the business or anything, just because I think it is expensive and, you know, like only good news is priced in at the moment, basically. So, uh, but for now, I've kept hold of it. Uh, I think I'm actually going to keep holding on to it unless, you know, one of my other stocks has a really big dip and, and you know, then I've got a thousand pounds to throw at it, basically. Uh, Red Row here is a UK uh, house builder. Um, I have profitably dabbled in this before, before I sold out. Um, I, I mean, I like house builders. I wanted one anyway. Uh, Red Row is interesting to me because it's actively looking at building its margins, uh, moving away from the southeast of London where it's expensive and slow, uh, and and moving up up and, and improving basically from that perspective where it's previously lagged uh, some of its peers. 
Uh, and then last but not least is Vistra here. This became one of my largest holdings. I sold out of National Grid uh, very profitably uh, just after it went ex-divi. So I've got a National Grid dividend to look forward to in the future, uh, as well as some other things as well. Uh, originally, my plan was to drip into this relatively slowly, but you could see it was moving only in one direction. And so I chucked lots of money at it. Really happy with my buy price here. Uh, I believe this is a $24 a share business. Um, and, you know, I know it's picked up some debt and it has to contend with the text and weather situation. As, you know, that's why it's got the debt. Uh, but, you know, it, it picked up a debt um, and its share price reacted way worse than that debt. So for me, it was just a complete disconnect and a great buying opportunity. So uh, that's uh, that's the end of my wife's uh, ISA and the end of this video. Um, those are slightly quicker than my monthly video. If anyone has any questions or wants, you know, a bit more detail on some of these stocks, uh, just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to make it happen. Uh, thanks very much for listening. Uh, I've been the Boss Hog and good luck with your investing.